Regatta is a old game. This is uh, the Avalon Hill version I uh, picked up recently. I first time I see it on a for sale on a site in my country, uh, so I snagged it as soon as I saw it. Um, I have never sailed uh, a boat before, but uh, it have always been uh, some kind of an interest to me to uh, learn a little bit about how to sail and uh, having a board game on the topic could be fun uh, to do it on the month of the year where it's not so possible to do it out in the real life if I would ever get myself a sailing boat. So, but the game is a pretty family friendly game where you can play up to five, I think. There are five boats and they everyone will have their own little sailing boat and then you will build a course. So here we have built a pretty common triangular course where you go like this in a triangle, uh, one, <coughs> one lap, for example, and the first one to cross the finish line and also the start line uh, will be the winner of the, the race. So what you do is when you build a course, you can build however you want. You can, for example, this is one of the most common. You have a committee boat and a starting boy, and uh, there should be equally many steps inside here as twice the amount of players. So three players, six steps here. And then you just decide to say, we will go round that boy on this side and then go that side and then crossing here again. And often you all often start with, uh, you have a wind direction where the wind is blowing like this. So it's, this is a called a easterly wind because you always t say where the wind is coming from because a sudden wind comes with uh, warm air if you're in the north side of the equator. So it's always of more interest to say where the wind comes from. But uh, for ease of purpose to play, you show where the wind is going so people know. So you always often start with a going against the wind and then going along and then running back home. The results, the, the game come with a rule book full of um, terminology for sailing boats. So it's kind of a little bit like a teaching or have an instructional or uh, what you call schooling purpose for people who have never sailed uh, a boat and are about to go on their first sailing boat and learn a little bit. So it's very easy. These boats have, uh, they are angled, also a little easy to, f they can fall apart, but they can angle like this. So it's very easy to see where the wind is coming from. For example, the sail is always pointing away from the wind. So this is, this is how it should look like this, or if it goes there and then when it turns, the wind suddenly comes from the other side. So you show it very easy like this. And this also means that the speed is de uh, is deterministic. Of course, the wind speed should be various if it's blowing hard or, or slow, but it's a uh, abstract abstracted down, so it's always the same speed from a certain wind direction because it, the, speed, the, the wind should affect everyone in the same kind of way. So for example, if you're going uh, 45 degrees against the wind, you have a speed of one. So here is one. And this is also a speed of one. So you go like, if you have one leg to go, you go only one step. If you turn a little bit like this, you have speed of two steps, like this. If you turn like this, you have a speed of three. This is the fastest when it comes 45 degrees from your stern. So you will go three steps. And if you're running with the wind, it goes two steps. So it's not as fast. So there are one, two, three, two, and then of course it turns again, and uh, three, two, one. And of course, if you choose to go against the wind, it will be zero, so it will effectively stall one of your turn. So around is very easy, uh, or for example, I can talk a little bit more about how you set up the starting of the game. <laughs> but for example, say we have, a, we, we have a already a lap on the way here, for example. Say it's blowing like this. 
he's up here and this one is all the way there so we have like this and I have made these for ease of play because it's uh, the starting player is determined by certain events in the in the round and but it's necessary to re remember the current seating order so we have three players and we have that blue is the starting player for this round and you always go clockwise so blue plays then red then yellow and then you see if there is a new if someone else will become the next round starting player you just I have made these signs, but otherwise you have to remember it. So I, I just made these signs to, to, so this player will get the one. So if, after yellow is done, you move this yellow marker here, uh, for example, like this, and then take this away. And then red will play. So in this case, red plays two times before blue plays again, but everyone always have the same number of rounds. So what happened here, maybe blue will become the starting next time starting player. So after one is done, blue gets this one back and you take this one away. And then you continue like this until someone wins. Also, I have made small uh, play rates here. Then what, what round you are in and the number of legs this round will have. So this is only necessary for the purpose of starting the game because the first... Okay, I can take this now. You, you, you randomize who will be the start player for the first turn, like this, first round. Sorry, round. And then that player shows anywhere on the board he wants to start, presumably before the starting line, because this is the starting line. So he maybe wishes to be here, and the other ones choose some other spots. And then you have one, ter one whole round, and then a second whole round, and then not until the third round you are allowed to be on the starting line and cross it. So if you accidentally push up over the, uh, the starting line on round one or two, you have to turn all the way back I think you can just turn like this, but uh, so you, you need to go down from the starting line and then back up before you can, because you overshoot the starting line before the starting gown uh, makes its starting boom, so to say to speak. So this is only for me uh, to uh, remember like first round, second round and third round. Now everyone can uh, cross the, the starting line and then you can take this one away. So how will... Uh, a round B, for example, maybe we are in the fifth round, so this is not necessary to have. Maybe this is the fifth round. You have the uh, you have the uh, angle of, of the wind. So what we first do is the starting player, in this case blue, roll this die. On a one and a two, you have a one leg. On a three and a four, you have two legs. And on a five and a six, you have three legs. So we roll. So this time we will have one leg. But for example, say we roll for for fun of purpose, we roll a six. Ah, it will be a free leg. So we just place it like this and says number of leg is free this turn. So that is the first thing that happened. Nothing else is uh, determined here. So what the starting player then do is he rolls two dice and looking for doubles like two and two or six and six or five and five or the sum of the dough both dice equals a seven. So here, we don't have anything of those, so it's a eight, so nothing happens here. The blue player just takes his turn, and he has three legs. What this means is that the blue player actually have like of free movement actions. So he can choose to just keep on moving in the direction he is, and that will be one leg. So he can do that, for example, of three legs this turn. This round, sorry, I always mix rounds and turns. So, for example, he can choose to keep his course for all the three legs this round. So he will go one, two, one, two, one, two. That is three legs. Or he can choose to uh, turn in the wind or a uh, turn, but not uh, switching the wind. Uh, for example, he can turn all the way. He was like this. Run, uh, he was, uh, what do you call it, uh, beam reaching for two, uh, two steps here, but he can make, for example, one, two, and then one, two, and then for a free action, he can turn like this because he still keeps the wind from the same direction and go one, two, three. You always have to do all the legs. He could also, if you would like to go like this, turn up uh, and go one step, and then go one step again, 
and then turn like this and then go one, two, three. Because he'd never change the side from where the uh, wind came in on him. So for example, those are some kind of uh, maneuvers he can do. He can also choose to turn up against in the wind uh, and stall for a, a turn, but that you are only allowed to do one time on all your legs. Or let me make oops, make me check. Uh, only one leg per turn, yes. So for example, if he for a reason often only by the starting of the game you want to maybe be stationary for a leg so you don't cross the line uh, so for example we have three legs here he could for example go one two turn up against the wind for one leg so that is his second leg and then continue moving one two three like this because he's ne he never turned around and got the wind in from the other side of the boat. So, when you go against the wind, you will either have to, you will either have to sometimes just keep like this and end up way over here, or some somehow turn around and get the wind from the other side. You can do it with the bow going, swinging against the wind, uh, like this, just he's just turning like this. That is called a heading maneuver. Or for example, if he's going down the wind and he wants to go that way, he he turns and the wind flips his boat so it's leaning on the other side. That is called a jibe or jibbing or jib in my language. Uh, so, and also, it's also a heading maneuver because you change the heading that dramatically. But jibe and heading are the common terms. What that does is it it's, uh, it's up one of your leg maneuvers. So, for example, if you're coming like this, he's going one and then choose to go uh, a, a heading maneuver. It eats up his second leg and the third leg he will have to go there. And the rule also says you cannot do two consecutive heading maneuvers. So, for example, you cannot go uh, one, one leg, second leg, third leg. So you cannot be stationary because if you do like that, you can uh, like turn around in the same spot uh, just waiting for the starting line to open up before you can cross it. So it's, it's abstracted down that way that you're only allowed to do one heading maneuver uh, for, in, uh, uh, not two heading maneuver in a consecutive, uh, uh, directly after each other. So there had to be at least one leg of movement in a direction before you can do it again. And that is, you cannot do turning up against the wind and then uh, doing this uh, uh, like tacking, tacking maneuver. I think this is called attacking when you go like this, and then the jibing when you go like that. Uh, those are both heading maneuvers and uh, both jibe and uh, this tacking is, are not allowed to do consecutive. Uh, what else can we talk about? Yeah, um, uh, when you roll the dice and uh, get uh, a, a two or uh, a, a pair, like two and two or the sum of seven, as I talked before, I should maybe have mentioned that then, you get what's called a puff bonus, a temporarily wind uh, increment uh, that happen in your very local little area. Uh, I'm, everyone knows that wind have these uh, small times where it, the wind increases for an, uh, so a little speed bo bonus and things like that. Uh, so that represent that you get it and sure it can feel random but uh, on a pair and seven it should be equally easy for everyone to uh, it's it, it's that e easy to get it that it should be uh, spread out evenly among the players for a uh, for a, a whole race I, we have not found any problem with this rule it's 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 making it fun uh, but of course, if someone get it all the time and someone don't get it, it can feel a little bit unfair, but 
hey, it's racing and it's all good fun. Uh, but we have not had any problem with that. So what does this um, extra speed bonus mean? It means that you get to increase the distance of one of your legs. So for example, this yellow player rolled a seven or a pair, so he get this bonus and it's a free leg turn. So either he can go, also this puff bonus as it's called, it's called a puff bonus. It's free optional, you don't have to do it. But what he can do here, he can go one, two, three for all his leg, or he can say, on my first leg, I want to use the puff bonus. So I will go one extra space there. So one, two, and then he can also say, yeah, I want to go one extra step. Uh, not one extra step. For my second leg, I want to go my regular step because I have already used my puff bonus. And maybe here he will turn and use the third leg to stand still here. So now he will probably go clear of this boy because he will follow the white dots. So that is basically how you play the game. Uh, I want to check any rules if I've got... Anything problematic? No, yeah, I should be fine. The first one to cross the finish line wins. If uh, two do it on the same round, the one who did it with his earliest leg, so if red cross it on his first leg, the 10th round, and blue cross it is the second or third leg of the 10th round, red wins. <laughs> if both does it the same round and the same leg, uh, just, it says to roll for the win, but uh, yeah, I have not seen it happen yet, but maybe you will just count the number of steps away from the boat, like these, we can call it latitudes, latitudes marks away from the ship will win. And if they are both on the same, yeah, maybe furthest some other way, or just roll for it, I don't know. <laughs> But if you choose to play a regatta, which is a series of races, uh, it can be the same course or different course, you decide. Uh, it says in the rules, uh, the regattas were often done in uh, odd pairs. So either you did a one uh, race, which is a one-off, uh, one, three, five, seven, nine, etc., etc. And the amount of points you score is that... Uh, after the whole regatta is finished, after say five races, the one with the least amount of points will um, uh, will win. And the points are, are given out like this, that the player who wins a race gets uh, uh, 0.75 points. So for example, four, uh, three parts of a, of a quarter. No, no, not three parts of a quarter, a quarter of a, a whole point. So, sorry, three parts of a whole point. Uh, so uh, 0 0.75 and then everyone else get the points from the position they're in so the second uh, place is uh, uh, a two uh, third is a three point or something like that so if you come if you win one race and comes uh, the second place next race you have a sum of 2.75 points so that is how it's all uh, added up uh, which I found kind of I have never heard that before and it was a little bit strange, but also fun when uh, there are different ways to calculate points in reverse of, for example, a Formula One race. Uh, let's see uh, if there's something else we can talk about. Uh, yeah, wind shift. Yes, if you roll a double two, no, not a double two, a two, uh, a snake eyes one and a one, the wind shifts clockwise, one steps, so all of a sudden uh, the wind comes from a little other direction. If you uh, make a double six, the wind shifts opposite uh, against uh, the clock. Uh, and the wind can only shift one time for a whole round. So for example, blue is starting player and makes a, a, a snake eye, the wind shifts. If the red rolls si double sixes or a snake eyes, the wind doesn't shift, it only shifts one per round. So, uh, if, for example, the wind, uh, we have uh, this player uh, going uh, 45 degrees against the wind for one, one step each leg, and then the wind shifts and go against him. So he will now be laughing, uh, he will not have, uh, be able to move. So if he choose to keep the sails on this side, he can just 
continue to move, uh, but he have to change direction. But he can also just make a heading maneuver and turn a little bit up so he goes like this and uh, and that will make the wind coming from the other side which moves loses one leg so if it was a three leg turn that would be first leg second third leg for example if um, if you're going like this and it can happen because say for example uh, blue place yellow is the uh, let's say yellow is start yellow is start player yellow has moved it looks like this the wind is coming from uh, his, uh, his the side and then blue uh, rolls double double eyes uh, double uh, double ones snake eyes he will become next start player also the wind will uh, oh okay sorry he rolls sixes Double sixes. The wind turns 45 degrees, so basically like this. Blue makes his turn, red makes uh, his, uh, his turn, and then this one goes away, and blue is the starting player. Because yellow already moved that round, say it was the 10th round, and then now it's the 11th round, and the blue rolls again, and again gets double sixes. Then the wind shift like this, which means when it's yellow's turn, the wind have shifted two times. This is the only time if it's uh, if it's uh, happening in this almost exact order, the wind can shift two turns in one in one round, which makes you uh, the yellow player having a like impossible uh, uh, angle of his boat versus the wind wind because. It should have automatically made like this. But to simulate that he is taken off guard by the wind and not paying attention, the yellow boat must spend one of his leg action to move up in a luffing position against the wind. And then a second leg to move um, to move uh, away uh, in a direction, for example, adjusting his sail so he moves like that or maybe continue and moves like that. Uh, so that's, if you're taking off guard that the wind shifts first dead center of you, laughing position, and then away again, so you are in a, like this, in an impossible uh, physical direction, you have to pay two legs of uh, a penalty. This is the basically almost, the only, uh, I think, the only time you can and are allowed to stay two positions in uh, the same uh, space because the rule book is a little vague it says a wind change can leave a yacht in a sloughing position when this happens take the skipper the skipper of the loving yacht must make a heading move to begin laughing and a second heading move to recover the error so yeah uh, so the, basically the game is very easy if you have someone knowing the game when you play it you can I always ask for oh wait how how is this going to be here it's n almost no rules at all and it's just a very fun and easy game uh, and we have had a lot of enjoyment with it just the few days we have had it uh, I can also say there are spinnaker cards this we have them to to show which color everyone is and also seating orders uh, but you can flip this as uh, to use as a spinnaker and when you the criteria for this is that you have to have the wind coming uh, from, for example, uh, you ha either have to be running, going directly with the wind, or one step away from it, like this. You are you have a criteria for a spinnaker, and to choose to fly the spinnaker, you already need to be in this position because it's the first thing you do on your turn. If it's the first thing you do before you roll or not, I'm not sure of. Uh, it says before removing, but so probably he can roll his dice. He rolls his dice, see what happened, and then say, okay, I will fly Spinnaker. So doing like that. And then every leg gets a plus one uh, speed, plus you get the Luff bonus, uh, no, not Luff bonus, the Puff bonus if you roll the seven or a double, 
so one, so in this case, for example, you have instead of three steps, you go four steps. So you can see the spinnaker goes really, really quick. And one of those legs can be even a five, uh, a plus one with the puff bonus. Uh, but the criteria is you can only, you can turn with the spinnaker like this, but you can, you cannot turn, uh, you can, you can have not have another angle for the ship and then like this. Uh, and take away a spinnaker, sacrifice one whole leg. So you can say like, okay, I will stop, I will use this leg to take down my spinnaker. That is uh, basically how you, how you do that. Then also, uh, we have only tried it a little bit. And uh, there are these right of way rules. Uh, which are uh, like keeping clear of me, I have uh, the right to go before you uh, kind of uh, things that are present in real life regatta racing and is basically uh, the traffical rule for sailing boats on, uh, on the sea or on a lake or something like that. And the rule says, this is spe special just for sailing boat, motorboats have other criteria, that a ship on a starboard tack, uh, for example, this ship will move, uh, this boat will move two steps, one, two, and this one will move, move one step here. So they will collide if it would be the end position. A starboard tack is when you have the wind from on, on your starboard side, starboard is the right side, port tack, uh, is if you have the wind from like this coming in on the port side of the boat, the uh, left side. A starboard tack boat always have the right of way and should not have to give away uh, for the other uh, port tack boat. So the port tack need to make sure uh, they don't collide. And the, 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 uh, what you check is, is for example, it's the new round. We have rolled for the number of legs before anyone moves. Who have the right of way in this round, for for, for example. Uh, in this round, we can see that yellow uh, have the right of way before red. So uh, red cannot uh, interrupt yellow's movement in, 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 in this particular, particular round. Uh, meaning uh, also that if uh, uh, you, you the, only if yellow choose to keep his course, this will be applied, because a boat that is turning and changing attack are always to keep clear of all other boats that do not keep, uh, that do not do attack. Uh, so uh, keeping course and speed, as we're talking in maritime. Uh, Maritime uh, terminology. If a boat coming with the same, uh, let's see, like this, mm, like this, he will go two steps, one, two, and he will go one step. They both have the speed in from uh, from the same uh, the same uh, side, the starboard side. Uh, so not starboard. Starboard always trump port side, but if both are the same side, either port port or starboard starboard, like in this case, the one down who gets the wind last, the wind hits red, then the wind hits yellow, will uh, have to give, uh, will always have the right of way. So if you are in a bed, uh, down the wind, you always have the right of way, and the red ship in this case need to make sure yellow goes clear. So red cannot, if red goes before yellow, he cannot end his turn here. Or if yellow goes before red, he can end his turn here and no uh, rule, right of way rule has been uh, violated. So that is basically, uh, that is basically it. But yellow could not turn uh, yeah, it's not possible. He cannot move here because it's directly against the wind. But 
you can yellow cannot like move up and make a turn in a place where yellow well red would uh, have to to uh, turn just because because you always have to uh, follow the change in tack rule that is a yacht which is either tacking or jibbing shall keep clear of all yachts on attack um, a yacht is on attack when it's not jibbing or attacking so, uh, but if someone makes a violation to this, there are uh, uh, written rules how to do it, but those are feels like impossible to keep track of. So uh, on the Board Game uh, Geek or uh, Board Game uh, Gulag, uh, they uh, made uh, a pretty nice and uh, realistic penalty move that a person who violates the right of way rule needs to do, perform this action uh, while keeping clear of all other boats so you cannot do this maneuver uh, so other boats will be interrupted you need to perform attack so first uh, changing the attack of your ship against the wind with the bow uh, clearing the the wind eye and then also performing a jibe but notice you cannot do a attack or a jibe directly after each other so you need to first steer up against the wind, move a little bit, and then jibe, and then you can continue with your um, with your race. Uh, so you basically have to do a 360 or something like that, or 180, depending on how you are before uh, before you can keep on. So that is uh, we have uh, only tried this uh, right of way rule a little bit, but it feels like it can be good to use uh, when people start. To know the game very good because then either one you can only just end your move just before someone and it will be a slog fest of tacking and tacking and tacking also there is the called um, uh, blanketing it's when someone gets caught down for example like this because this ship gets the wind and creates a, a, a shadow space or like a, a area where wind does not uh, go in, the wind continues around. Uh, so uh, a player who finds himself downwind of another uh, boat on the, I'm not sure of the terminology, is it the leeward side? Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, leeward, pronounced uh, lowered, lowered, I think. It's pronounced lowered, yeah, but spelled leeward. So yellow is on red's leeward side. Uh, and he will have to uh, sacrifice, I think. It's uh, a blanket boat. The yellow is a blanket boat here. Will have to lose one leg from a turn. And if red would fly spinnaker, for example, like this, if, yell, if red flying a spinnaker, he blankets two space down. So that is a nice set, uh, way to catch up if you get one or two steps behind someone with the wind coming from your astern and your red is flying a spinnaker, he makes this... Uh, uh, wind bubble or wind shadow here in those two steps so yellow would lose one turn and then uh, yellow, red can just move, move uh, his, uh, his steps we also added uh, to the right of way coming back to it the right of way um, rule is that a catching boat which coming from one behind always needs to keep clear of those he's running up against. The right-of-way rule, basically, if they are overlapping uh, like this, uh, where ships almost touch each other in a uh, line from the front and the end, uh, like this or something like that, the right-of-way rule applies it also applies, of course, if you're coming behind, but the, the boat coming, catching another boat always need to keep clear of those ahead of it. So it's basically, yeah, the, the catching boat needs to make sure to keep clear. 
Uh, I guess all the rules, were, uh, I described them little from here and there, uh, but it's actually a very easy uh, game. The rule book is not so good. It's very short. I can recommend this uh, terminology. Uh, the, but the, there are a, a bunch of um, um, contradictions. For example, you you see them writing, the boats can do like this because of that. And then the second, the and, and just after that, there is another uh, uh, a contradiction to that rule. But as I have read the rules a few times and tried the game, I have star uh, started to think I'm inside the writer's head, how they mean it. It is just unfortunately that they use some bad terminology in some places. But this is how I play the game and I can recommend people playing it like this. It's a very fun game and uh, a course for two player going like this can take 20 minutes. So I can't believe like a course for four players like this, maybe a little larger is 35 minutes. 40 minutes, which is all good fun, and it's it's a it's a blast to play. It feels pretty accurate. Yeah, maybe I can show you a game, but I, I'm not so keen on on doing all maneuvering myself because it's all, all all often find myself losing track of who is who and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, I hope this video will be enjoyed by some people at least. And maybe I'm hoping to have a like a three or five ra race regatta with uh, my uh, sp my girlfriend and maybe my parents. Uh, my girlfriend surely enjoys the game. She have never sailed before. She have only been on like motorboat in the ar archipelago, but uh, as as me, she have never sailed on a sailing boat. But she enjoyed the game and she caught it up like that. It was like five minutes teaching for me the wind directions and then we were on the way and then we checked on some of the rules along the way. I can also recommend maybe doing your own little play raid uh, for when the wind change. For example, if you point like this, you see the wind coming like this, following uh, this. Uh, from east to west, then you check where does where are the blue boat supposed to go? He's supposed to go here, which is there, like that. It's a one. If the wind shifts like like this, two steps, you can see he's supposed to go there, which is there. It's a two step. So boom, boom. So that is like a very easy. Uh, uh, way to show how help someone who's new with the game. You can also have this one like that, close to you, for example, like this. Then you take a little painted boat. So for example, blue, he is, his boat is like this. And then you take the wind arrow and you see the wind and you only and you place the wind arrow like this and you see it points uh, yeah it points on on a one uh, I should have made this maybe a little better but for example if the boat turns it sees us it's a two point turns again it's a three points it's a two three two one and a zero so so you have this in front of you and you only angle this both according to the boat there if you have a directional problem for you to oh i'm not seeing which way is it leaning so you for example oh blue boat is turned like this now oh so it should be matching yeah it is and the wind coming from here Oh, okay, so it's a one, the wind shifts. Oh, it's a two, I go two steps. So it's very easy just to do like this. That's it, I think. Uh, as I said again, I popped in some rules here and there. It's not so easy to follow along maybe. But uh, I really enjoy the game. Uh, somehow I have a tendency to like these older games. Uh, they are in one way a lot of simulation and maybe not so so good of a play uh, like playing game I, i've said to my 
my girlfriend, I would like to have this exact game, but with a hand of cards that you draw from a deck, either a personal deck or your or a common deck, instead of maybe this uh, roll off. So you have a little more uncertainty to what you are, what you can do. But when you have the hand in front of you, you have a hundred percent. Control of what you do. Uh, here you have 100% control, but with a po possibility for a bonus, uh, which can be a little too ter deterministic. I, I'm not having a problem with it. I love the game as it is, but I would like to have uh, maybe kind of develop my own like deck of cards where people drawing. Like I love games like Flamme Rouge, which is also very easy and deterministic, but there you have the uncertainty of the cards that you draw. Uh, so you have these three cards for the boats. And this, the, the, the new game they make, the Heat, Pedal to the Metal, seems to be a perfect Formula One game where you play cards equal to the gear and the cards are drawn from your own specified deck. Something like this would uh, be nice here where you have some maybe some stress and adrenaline uh, added uh, with uh, some cards giving you more stress, you're pushing it to the limit, getting maybe one extra space per leg instead of using this laughing, or this uh, puff, puff uh, rolls. Maybe you, you play a card, oh, you get to go one extra space, and then, um, uh, but it adds to, uh, to uh, uh, adds like uh, a, stress, a stress card to your deck, and next time you shuffle it, you get a lot of stress cards, which means maybe you will, uh, on, can only turn a certain degree, so instead of, every, maybe you can play a card to turn one step, or play a, to turn more steps, and... Uh, uh, also, when you turn and before you tacking, so the wind shifts, come uh, flipping your boat. You need to play a special specified card, kind of a, maybe a sail card. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm rambling on here about my ideas for how you can make it, but it should be could be could could be fun. Maybe I can try to make my own deck and see how it works. But I will also be happy to play this for a long long time. Recommend it. If you find Regatta, get it. People have uh, said this version is not so good. I will disagree. This version is perfect. You can make your own islands if you want them. Uh, also, I've seen the, the uh, been declining on these windrows. Now it works perfect. This uh, version of Regatta is perfect. Thank you.